Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. Today, we are gonna be looking at how to add a calendar right into your Python project. Oh, ooh, fun. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool using the T-Calendar library. Okay. So whether you are building a scheduling app or just wanna brush up on your t kinder skills or just plain curious, mm -hmm. we've got you covered today. Cool. Um, I'm excited to have you here with me today. Yeah, this will be fun. You've probably used tons of calendar widgets out there. Oh yeah, for sure. Have you ever thought about how to build one yourself, though? Uh, not really. I mean, I just use them. Right. But, I mean, yeah, I guess someone has to build them. Well, it turns out TCAT Calendar makes that surprisingly simple. And you can even get pretty creative with it. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, for this deep dive, we're basing it on a tutorial from plus2net.com. Okay. Which is a pretty good online resource for this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they break down the process in a way that's super easy to follow. Um, and, you know, what's interesting is that this all starts with something that we kind of just take for granted. Yeah. The humble calendar. Yeah, true. We just click dates and schedule events and all that. But behind the scenes... It's all code. Yeah, it's code. That makes it happen. That's making it happen. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. So to kick things off, let's install TK Calendar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's as simple as typing pip install TK Calendar right in your command prompt. Easy. Assuming you've already got the Kinter set up. Right. You'll be ready to go in just a couple seconds. Wow, that is a really quick install. Yeah. It really shows how user-friendly Tkinter is. Mm -hmm. Even when we're dealing with GUI elements, it's not like mm -hmm. we're spending hours configuring environments or anything. Bro. We can just jump right into the code. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the code for a basic calendar widget from the tutorial. Okay. I'm always amazed at how few lines it actually takes. Let's see it. Okay, so here's the code. Okay. Pipe from TK, import TK. From TK, a port calendar. My W dot geometry, 380 by 200. Okay. My Jico select mode day, year 2021, day 23. My W dot main loop. Wow, that is pretty elegant. Right. So what we're doing here is first importing the modules that we need. Right. Um, and then setting up the main window with TKTK. Mm -hmm. And then geometry defines the size of that window. Right. And then the real magic happens when we create the calendar object. Exactly. And within that calendar object, we can already specify some details. Oh, cool. Like what? Like whether we want to select days. Okay. The default year and month, e even the day that should be highlighted initially. Oh, wow. So we can like pre-select a day. Yeah. That's neat. And if you leave out the specific day, it'll just default to today's date. Oh, that's cool. Super user-friendly. Right. right out of the gate. Exactly. Love that. And then we use Grid to position the calendar, which I'm sure you're familiar with, as a seasoned ticker user. Oh, yeah. Grid. All the time. And then finally, my delu.main loop gets that window up and running. Okay. So that's like the standard tkinter stuff the, at the end there. Yeah. But now we've got this calendar. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, I know we're focusing on calendars, but the tutorial does mention the date entry feature, okay, which is worth keeping in mind. What's that? It's like a specialized text box specifically for dates. Oh, okay. So it's another cool way to let users interact with dates in your app. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so we've got our calendar on the screen looking all fancy. It is fancy. But how do we actually capture the date that the user selects? Ooh, good question. That's kind of important. Yeah, so this is where things get interesting because right. the tutorial actually presents two different approaches. Oh, okay. Each with its own pros and cons. Interesting. Okay, lay it on me. So first we've got the string var and the trace method. All right. So this is kind of like setting up a little alarm system oh. where you link a variable to the calendar and anytime that selection changes, bam, that variable gets updated and it'll trigger a function to update a label with a new date. Oh, so it's like reactive. Yeah. So as soon as they click it, yeah. it updates. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. It creates that really dynamic reactive feel. Yeah. The user doesn't even have to click a button. The change is reflected instantly. I like that a lot. Yeah, you can imagine how useful that would be for like a real-time booking system or something similar. Oh, yeah, totally. Now, the other way is a little bit more classic using a button click. Okay. So you have a button, and when the user clicks it, a function just reads the selected date from the calendar and displays it. So more explicit, Yeah. they click the button, then it does the thing. Exactly. Okay, I see. So this approach gives the user a bit more control. Mm -hmm. They decide when to retrieve the date. Right. And while it might not be as flashy as the reactive approach, yeah. it certainly has its place depending on how you're designing your app. It all depends on what you're building. Yeah, okay, so we know how to get the date the user picks. Right. But what if we want to pre-select a specific date for them? Oh, like a default. Yeah. Uh, Say, in a booking app, we want the calendar to default 
to the user's check-in date. Right, that makes sense. Well, thankfully, 2K Calendar gives us the selection set function to do just that. Okay. We can give it a specific date using datetime.date. Mm -hmm. Or even just use a simple string like 81616 yeah. if that works for our situation. Oh, that's convenient. Right? The tutorial even shows both examples. Nice. Which is helpful. Yeah. It's all about having the flexibility to adapt to different use cases. For sure. But there's a potential pitfall here that's worth mentioning, right? Oh. Ah. Oh, what is it? Well, using local calendar formats like that, 816-2021. Yeah. Seems really convenient. It could actually lead to issues if your app is used in different regions. Yeah. With different date conventions. Different parts of the world write the date differently. Exactly. Imagine the confusion if <laughs> someone in Europe, yeah. where the day comes before the month enters a date, thinking it's August 16th. Oh. When the app interprets it as June 8th. Yikes. Yeah. That would be bad. That's no good. Not good. So what's the best practice to avoid this kind of mix-up? Well, it's always safer to use the datetime.date .date format whenever possible. Okay. It ensures clarity and consistency regardless of the user's location or calendar settings. Makes sense. You can always format the output later to display in a way that's familiar to the user. Right. But internally keeping things consistent is key. Okay, good advice. I try. Now, I know a lot of our listeners out there are thinking, great, we can get the date. Mm -hmm. But what about displaying it in a specific format? Ooh. Like day, month, year, or even something more customized. Yeah, how do we do that? You're reading their minds. I try. It's a common need. And the way TK Calendar handles it is pretty clever. Okay, I'm intrigued. So initially, you might think to use the get date function, yeah. which gives you the date as a string. Right. But here's the catch. You can't actually format that string directly. Oh, what? Yeah, so that's where Selection Jet comes to the rescue. Our hero. Instead of giving us a string, it gives us a date time dot date object. Okay. Which opens up a whole world of formatting possibilities. Yeah, I see, because date time dot date has all those methods and stuff. Exactly. But okay. We can use the powerful strof time method. Oh yeah, one of my favorites. To format the date any way we like. Ooh, fun. The tutorial shows an example using percent ten percent percent for day month year. Mm hmm But the options are vast. Yeah, you can really go crazy with that. This is where Python really shines yeah offering a comprehensive set of format codes allowing for incredibly detailed control over date and time display for sure if you need to format dates in a very specific way python has got you covered python's got your back it's definitely worth diving into the documentation to explore the full range of what's possible i'm gonna have to check that out this is awesome <laughs> we've already covered so much ground we have but there's still plenty more to explore with 10k calendar cool so stay tuned can't wait you know, one thing that often gets overlooked with these practical tools... What's that? ...is the importance of aesthetics. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've got our basic calendar up and running. Right. But what if it just totally clashes with the look of our application? Yeah, aesthetics can make or break the user experience. Totally. Luckily, TAK Calendar gives us quite a bit of control over how our calendar looks. But that's good to hear. And it's more than just making things pretty. Right. A well-designed calendar can actually improve usability. Yeah. Like guiding the user's eye and highlighting important information. For sure. For sure. For example, imagine we're building a scheduling app uh -huh. with a sleek, dark theme. Mm -hmm. A bright white calendar would totally stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, it would. With TA Calendar, though, we can easily adjust colors to match our app's theme. Okay. Creating a more seamless and visually appealing experience. Nice. You can change the background and foreground colors. Tweak the headers, even customize how the selected date is highlighted. Wow, so we've got a lot of control over the look and feel. And speaking of highlighting, yeah. let's say we're building a booking system okay. where users can only book appointments within a certain time frame. Mm -hmm. How do we prevent them from selecting dates outside of those limits? Oh, good question. Well, TK Calendar has a solution for that, too. Well, of course it does. We can set minimum and maximum dates. Okay. Effectively restricting the user's choices. So they can't even click on those dates. Yeah, which prevents errors yeah. and keeps the user experience nice and focused. I like that. Yeah, it's like putting up those velvet ropes in a museum, uh -huh. gently guiding the user towards the allowed choices. Right. And it's not just about setting hard limits, right? What else can we do? We can also visually highlight specific dates or ranges oh, well, to draw attention to them. Gotcha. Like, imagine we want to mark weekends or holidays differently. Okay. We can use color font styles or even custom icons 
to make those dates stand out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's like those little visual cues you see on calendars mm. reminding you of important events or deadlines. Makes sense. Okay, so we've covered the basics and talked about customizing the look. Yeah. But I have a feeling Time Calendar has a few more tricks up its sleeve. Oh, I'm sure it does. What about those advanced features you mentioned earlier? Ah, uh, yes. What else can this thing do? Let's move beyond just displaying dates. Okay. And talk about adding some interactivity. Ooh. Imagine being able to add custom events or markers to specific dates. Okay. Like little reminders or annotations right on the calendar. So we could build an app that reminds users of birthdays, anniversaries, upcoming deadlines. Exactly. That would be super useful. Yeah. You could even fetch event data from an external source, like a database or an API. Oh, wow. And display it dynamically on the calendar. That's awesome. Think about a project management app that pulls task deadlines from a shared project database. Oh, that's a really good idea. Right on the calendar. Now that's powerful. It is. It turns the calendar from a simple date picker into a dynamic information hub. Totally. But wait, there's more, right? There's always more. Didn't you mention something about embedding widgets within the calendar cells? Ah, yes. This is where things get really interesting. Widgets within calendar cells. Yeah. What would that even look like? So imagine this. You can actually embed other Kinter widgets right inside those calendar cells. Hold on. Widgets within calendar cells. Mm -hmm. Give me an example. Okay. So think about a booking system. Okay. Instead of just seeing the date, yeah. each cell could display a small icon okay. indicating the booking status. Gotcha. Maybe a green check mark for available. Mm-hmm. A red X for booked, okay. or even a little clock icon if the booking is pending. That's a fantastic visual cue. Right. It gives the user so much more information at a glance. At a glance. It's like turning each calendar cell into a mini dashboard. Or imagine a historical event visualizer. Okay. Where each date on the calendar displays a small image or a tooltip. I like it. Summarizing the key event that happened on that day. Ooh. That's a cool idea. The possibilities are vast. They are. And really pushes the boundaries of what you can do with a calendar interface. Totally. I'm starting to see how a TK calendar can be so much more than just a simple calendar widget. Oh, yeah. It's like a gateway to creating truly unique and interactive applications. And remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Right. We focused on TK Calendar, mm -hmm. but the real power comes from integrating it with the broader Kinter ecosystem. Yeah. You can combine it with all sorts of widgets to create sophisticated user interfaces. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We have. From the basics of creating a calendar mm. to some seriously advanced features. Yeah, those are sure. So as we wrap up this deep dive into TK Calendar, what are some key takeaways for our listeners to remember? Well, if you're looking to add a calendar to your Python project, mm -hmm. take a calendar should be at the top of your list. Okay. It's easy to use, incredibly versatile, yeah. and it offers a surprising amount of depth for those who want to explore its full potential. Yeah, don't be intimidated by the word advanced. Right. So we're the simple calendar, mm -hmm. play around with the customization options, and then see where your imagination takes you. Exactly. And remember, this is just one piece of the puzzle. Right. Tick a calendar works beautifully with other tick inter widgets, allowing you to create truly interactive and dynamic applications. So to all our listeners out there, go forth and build amazing things. Yeah. And if you create something cool with a K calendar, share it with the world. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see what you come up with. That's it for our deep dive into TK Calendar. Right. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, happy coding.